start recording. Okay. Thank you everybody for joining us. This is a, this is our first AIM Sports Learn Fast webinar series that we're going to start doing for at least the next couple of months at this time of the day on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I am uh, so happy that uh, everybody is here and joining us. It's uh, taking some of your valuable time to come here and, uh, and learn a little bit of the of the of the products that you use in your in your motorsports. So, the uh, just a couple of things we're gonna we're gonna start with um, a presentation, and we're gonna you know today's uh, topic is data download options in Race Studio Three. The um, the, the general idea is we're going to we're going to talk about something for 15 or 20 minutes. You know, in each one of these webinars, we're going to go across and and then turn it into a, a question and answer. You uh, if you don't have it open already, you have a you have a button there that you can open up your question and answer box in your chat box. Open that up, and if you have any any questions as we go, uh, go ahead and type them into the questions and answers. The chat box is there as well, and uh, can chat amongst yourselves, or you can uh, send stuff to the to, to myself and the, the presenters, and um, and uh, and we'll try to answer those as we go. We'll uh, we'll try to keep this on the topic of the data download options, but any any questions that get added into the uh, into the chat box or the uh, questions and answers, we're going to use those to build future topics. So so uh, if you got something to add in there, please please go ahead and do that. So we're uh, I see lots of people saying hello over here in the chat box. Thank you very much. Everything is uh, is is pretty good. Uh, somebody asked a question there real quick. Our mics are muted, correct? That is true. If you're here as an attendee, the uh, your your camera's off and your and your mics are muted. So uh, go ahead and do that. If we see something we really really want to chat with somebody about, if they have a great question as part of uh, of something, we can promote promote that person in here and have you have a chat and ask the question if we want to. We'll probably not do too much of that uh, in in this first one, but we'll see where that goes. The um, uh, Robbie, maybe you can do it. The we this first webinar is uh, you guys all signed up for this one. There is a, another link that is going to sign you up to to see the one that's coming up uh, this coming Thursday in just a couple of days, and then every one all the way through the end of May. There's a single link. Robbie's placed it there in the chat tab. If you want to go ahead and click on that, you can click on that and uh, and quickly uh, register, and that'll put you in. Uh, where you're going to get an email one day before each of the next webinars and uh, allow you to see what the topic is and whether or not you want to join that one as well. So uh, click on that. It's also in your email. You got about an hour ago down at the bottom if you don't end up you know, clicking on that now. And it will be in, a, in an email that you're going to get one out uh, within a day of this one ending. You're going to get a you know, thank you for coming kind of a thing and ask you any questions there. The link for the future ones will be in, the, in there as well. Make sure you sign up for that one. The, um, I uh, want to make sure we're, we're building some building blocks here on some uh, some information and then your topics are going to help us grow and build up into the uh, uh, in, into getting you the information that you want. Okay, perfect. I want to do a couple of quick introductions here first to uh, to, to 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 introduce you to our co-hosts, the people that are going to help us on the, these first two or three, three or four. Uh, webinars that we're going to do. They're, they're AIM staff that have been with us for quite some time. And uh, we're gonna, first, we're going to introduce Robbie. Uh, Robbie's from our California office. Uh, I enjoy working with Robbie a lot. He's going to, um, Robbie's going to introduce you, and I'm going to ask him a couple of questions. Uh, two questions, Robbie, as, as, uh, to introduce yourself. How long have you been with AIM? You know, and, and kind of what do you do? And uh, what is your most fulfilling and favorite part of this job that, uh, you know, working with all our, our, our great uh, customers? Been with AIM uh, 10 years, and uh, my most fulfilling aspect of the job is that my office is a racetrack, and I get to share my experience and, and knowledge with like-minded and passionate people. Like, it's not everyone gets to do that. Perfect, perfect. The other, and he's from our, our California office, I think he said. The other one is, is, is Cameron. Uh, Cameron's uh, is up there, and he uh, Cameron's works out of a Roanoke office, and uh, you probably see him a lot of uh, different kind of events. Cameron, same questions. How long have you been with AIM, and what is your most fulfilling and favorite part of the job? Hello, everyone. Um, I have been with AIM for a little over ten years as well, and <clears throat> I mean, and just as everybody else, you know, cars and racing is a passion, and you know, it's definitely a, a dream to be able to work in the industry, and. Um, you know, enjoy every day of work. It's nice not to have to uh, stress about going to work. Perfect. S same thing for me. I, I've been, uh, 
uh, I've been with uh, with AIM for quite a bit. Uh, I've been um, I started here directly in, in May of 2011. That's been almost it's coming up on nine years ago now. It's uh, surprising how time flies. The the interesting back backstory on that is the first Micron I ever bought was in uh, it was in it was June of 2000 and I'm sorry June of uh, 1998. My son raced carts and we uh, and, and uh, we were looking at uh, some different options of what we wanted to do and and, and seeing the ads and, and bought an old original Micron and that was uh, that was a little over 21 years ago so I've been using the products quite a bit so um, my favorite part of the job is I, I just I enjoy the teaching part the the helping the supporting and um, um, it, so for me this is, a, is is like an ideal job where we can come in and uh, the passion that, that I've had for gosh um, you know, 40, 40, 50 years of, of motorsports, being able to turn that around. And then another thing that I've always enjoyed doing with other jobs was, was the teaching and the supporting side. And to be able to, to merge those two together to do what we do here is, uh, is, has been great for me. You'll see one other person in the, in, in the camera view, and that's Mike James, the owner of AIM. He's going to be sitting there. He, he's got some ideas and maybe some things he'll post up. Um, but um, he's, he's more of a He's watching everything, helping us out, but uh, it'll be mainly Robbie and Cameron that are that are that are supporting you in the in the chat and in the questions and answers. So that's Mike James in the other picture there. So perfect. Okay, we've got that part up and running. Again, we're going to probably do it 15, 20 minutes here on the subject. Ask some questions down to, in, in the question and answer part. You can chat back and forth in the chat. If you have something that you want Robbie or Cameron or me to actually uh, discuss while we're talking here, make sure it goes up into the uh, questions and answer part. Uh, that's where we're going to be focusing as much. And then we'll um, uh, grab those and, and take care of those. 15, 20 minutes, maybe, you know, somewhere in there for the, the data download options in Race Studio 3 and, and with the hardware. And then we'll open it up to those, some of those questions that uh, are somewhat related to that. And then, uh, then we'll call it a day. This will then be posted fairly quickly up on our, our AIM Sports YouTube site. I'll, I'll give you a link for that uh, uh, in, in the chat box in a little bit as well. And, um, uh, and we'll go from there. Okay. Thanks. Perfect. So let's go ahead and jump up. I'm going to share... I'm going to share Race Studio 3. Let's see. There it is. Here's, here's Race Studio 3. And what we're going to talk about today is there's some, there's some options commands. And what um, one of the biggest questions I get when, we were, when we're out there doing our seminars or, or, or emails that I get, phone calls I get, is uh, just some, some settings that make this whole process of, of, of downloading your data so much more, so much better, right? And there's a couple of different ways to get to it. I wanted to show both of them to you, uh, to, just to make it easier, right? So he, here I'm connected to Ray Studio. I've got a gauge running over here uh, to my demonstration MXP system, and uh, so I can bring that up, and you can click on it just like you would normally connect uh, when you're when you're in the field. You can come in and connect on that, click on that connected device. You have some options. One of them is the, is the download tab where you're going to go download your data. And as soon as I click on that, we have over here on the right-hand side, and you'll notice this in Race Studio 3 everywhere, there's this, this cogged wheel over here that is, uh, um, symbolizes that there's always some settings uh, un underneath that. And uh, so it's right over here on the right-hand side on the top. If I were to click on that, we have uh, some different options we can get to. One of them is settings. This is the dialog box I want to talk about today and, uh, and, and just chat about how to set this up and, and, ma and make sure it works for you. I'm gonna close it real quickly and show you another way to get to this exact same dialog box, but, but when, you're, uh, when you're not connected to a name device. So let's close that out. If you were to come up here to the, to the, to the options, uh, the preferences button in Ray Studio, even when you're not connected to a, to a display, you click on that button, you also have a data download option underneath that. And if I click on that, that exact same dialog box opens up. So you can do these settings, even if you're not, you know, can't travel to your shop or out into the garage or wherever your, uh, wherever your AIM device is. So you can do this at home with your, uh, with your laptop uh, ahead of time. So we've got this dialog box. There's a some real basic things here that are going to make your life a whole lot easier, especially early on. Some of the questions we got a ton were, uh, were, 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 were files were coming in and trying to overwrite the, the, the file that, uh, that came up uh, right away. <clears throat> Pardon me. So the, um, 
So here's the first one. The first thing you want to do here is where do you want to store your data on your computer? So the, uh, when you're under the data download tab, you have this option of root folder for download. You know, mine right now is C Ames Fort data. By default, it's going to put it into a kind of a window structure under your own users, the, the, the logged in person, right? And then it's going to put it under users. And then in my case, it'd say Roger and, and all that. Maybe I want my data to be in, a, in an area that is um, um, uh, a little bit more convenient for me to get to no matter who's logged in or, you know, in an area where I can do my backups under my you know, your, uh, your cloud, you know, where every time you're logged in, it, 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 it sends it out. So one of the things you can do is you come into the change button while you're in here and, and drive, you know, put yourself into an area where wherever you want them to store. I'm not going to go through that process right now. It, it is as easy as just, you know, clicking until you get to the folder you want and then hit the select folder. I happen to like mine in um, on, on the root directory, obviously in the root hard drive on, on my laptop, and then under the AIM Sport folder, and then uh, and then in a data folder, and then from then on, if I want to do backup of my data, it's um, is I can take that uh, data folder itself and then send that out to you know and have that being stored on my cloud every time I'm connected or, or however it happens to be. So. This is the root of where we're going to start, right? And you do that by the change function. Okay. The uh, the next thing we would do is build a build a folder structure, and uh, and and start the whole folder structure and file naming and, and and all of that kind of thing. But first, one of the things I'd like to do is is maybe maybe do a quick little poll to talk with uh, to everybody. Take a look at this, and tell me. You know what? What hardware are you guys using? And you can uh, you can click on on multiples of these. Uh, we'll leave this up here for maybe 30 seconds or so. This is, by the way, all we're going to do a couple polls, maybe three of them here today. They're 100% anonymous. You know, nobody is going to uh, match your data system with your name, so don't worry about that. Um, but what we're really using things like this for is we're, we're this these webinars are really really user driven, and uh, information like this is going to help us target uh, which topics we're going to use in the in the near future so so keep on working on that the um, we're uh, we're up to about 50 percent of you have uh, have have responded already and again you can you can pick multiples if you happen to have a, a, a solo a solo two and a, a smarty cam make sure you pick both of them and, uh, and, and, uh, and and let us know what you're using we'll let that go for just a few more seconds and then we'll uh, we'll, we'll call that okay while we're um, while we're doing that, has there been any uh, any questions, uh, Cameron or Robbie, that have uh, have me focused on what we're doing here? Anything in particular? No, um, doesn't seem like anything that you okay. need to okay. address quite nope, I, yet. Yeah, I see that. I see you've some. There's been some answered questions in the in the, the Q and A. Good for you guys. Okay, okay, that's pretty good. Let's end that polling, and then we will move on, and we'll start the process of of the, the next steps. So we've what we chatted about was was this this Aimsport data folder. And then what you can do, if you wish, is you can every time you go to the track, every time you go to a, a different track, a different day, you know, it all depends on how you kind of set up your 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 motorsports program. If it's just you, you maybe you set these these folder structures up a little bit different. But the software gives you the opportunity to build folders underneath this data folder for every file that you download, okay? So in this case, the way I've got it set up right now, uh, Aimsport data, every time I go to download one, because I've checked these two, I've checked track and I've checked date. So every time I download a file, it's, uh, it's gonna check for and see if that track has already been built, let, you know, um, mid-Ohio. And if mid-Ohio is already there, it's going to open up that folder and start dropping the data into that folder. And then I've got a second folder that is automatically checked for or builds uh, called date. So it's going to look for you know, mid-Ohio, whatever the name, the track that, uh, that you're at based on, uh, based on the information from the GPS and, and the tracks that you select. And then, uh, and then, of course, the date. And right now, that's what this is going to be. So if you look down here below the example, it's going to be Aimsport data the track that I'm at, and then the date. And let's say maybe we want uh, the date to be to, the date to be on top of the track. You know, the first folder will be date and then the track below that. 
the setting is pretty easy to do. All you got to do is come over here to these little arrows on the on the right hand edge and click the up arrow for the for the date one. You click that once and now the date is going to be the first folder that it's going to look for or create and then the the tracks underneath that. Right? And and just simply by checking these. If I wanted to have let's say you have a team that is um, many different um, cars or, or racers. You, you, have, you have four cars on your team. So maybe you want every, each racer to have his own folder. So then, and maybe track is not so important or date's not so important. Um, let's take the date away. So now you're gonna have a folder that it's gonna tell it, okay, we're at Mid-Ohio in our example. And then there's gonna be another folder for every uh, the four different racers that are on your team. So this whole folder structure thing is pretty, uh, pretty powerful for you to get the data sorted and, 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 and stored nicely where you can always find it and, and back it up easily. The one other thing we'll talk about on these folders is this one, there's a couple of them down here that give us the option of doing some custom text. As soon as we click on one of those, we can come in and, and call that folder, you know, generate another folder that has uh, anything that you wish to call it if it doesn't fit into our normal canned ones, which are date, track, racer, vehicle, championship, and venue type, okay? Perfect, perfect. The next step is once you've got your folder structure and where it's gonna be stored, you have the option of, of um, creating a file name and automatically creating that file name every time you download it. You don't have to tell it all these different things every time. The, um, in this particular case, what you can, if you have, again, multiple team members, you can, you can have the, the racer's name uh, as part of the file name. It's giving us an example right down here below racer under bar and then the next one I and this one is the one I suggest that you strongly always have in part of your file naming is the date and the time <laughs> pardon me the uh, the date and the time it, it because it, once you you've downloaded some of you probably ran into this you you've downloaded your data you go to the track the first time you've downloaded your data and then you go out on the track you do practice number two you come back in and you got go ahead and download the data and it comes up with a dialog box right off the bat this file already exists. Do you want to to uh, to overwrite or delete, right? And that's just like, uh, ah, uh, no. And uh, so the uh, uh, by having the date and the time just automatically part of the file name automatically, you get rid of that uh, problem. And every test that you download will be will be in there and and uh, giving you some information uh, as far as the file naming. So keep that in mind. If you want the date and the time to be the first one, uh, same same process. Go over to the edge you've got these little arrows and let's just bump the date and the, the time up so now your actual file name is going to be the date and the time under bar and then the driver's name you could uh you could take the racer out and put in the the vehicle itself if you want or or the you know have the track name as part of that build your file name for something that works for you everybody that does these things it's it's a it's an individual kind of a thing so whatever whatever you like okay perfect once you get all of that correct you, you have that, and let's say then you're at the track and you're with your team, you got the, the trailer out there, you're out, you're, you've got your little download set up. Maybe you wanna have a, 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 a USB hard drive parked next to your computer and you wanna have that plugged in. You can also come in and you can actually check this box and you can have a, a copy of the downloaded data. So every time you download this data, a copy is gonna go to wherever you drive it to. So again, you'd hit the change button drive to another folder on that computer or your external hard drive or whatever it happens to be. A very handy tool for, maybe you've got a, a laptop that stays in the trailer and when you're gonna go back at, uh, you're gonna home for the, you know, for the night or back to the hotel. Gosh, it's, it's pretty nice to have that, uh, that little USB hard drive sitting there with the data being written to there automatically and then you can take that back or hand that to another team member or something as well. So that's what that copy downloaded data to another folder means, it just makes another copy, okay? Perfect. Once we get the data downloaded, set up you know, under this box, we have some other options here I wanted to talk about as part of this. I just want to basically go across this screen and, and, uh, and give all these options. So the next one we have is download movies. It's something we do not do right now. You know, typically, most everybody, you're going to pull the SD card out of, the, out of your Smarty Cam and download it there. It's much quicker than coming across this. So typically, most people will skip the downloading of the movies. But if you want to, you can uncheck this and you can you can have a, a folder where you can do the same thing. But um, rarely is that done. So I'd pull your SD cards out and put them uh, wherever, wherever the movies you'd like to store them. The download venue types is an interesting, uh, may, maybe the maybe the top of the, the, the heading of that doesn't uh, 
doesn't a lot of people don't understand it right off the bat the the download venue type is when you go ahead and download your data you're going to end up with a box that those five panels it's going to ask you who was the driver who was what track were you at one of them is the venue the venue type and the it's really the the type of session and uh and this is a long list if i pull over here and i start dragging this down you're going to see a whole bunch of different test types right and uh and maybe in your world the type of racing you do you don't use certain ones so we don't want that that pull down list when you actually download the data to be you know super exposed right super just tons of information in there we want to get it down to the five or six types of uh, sessions that you might do this is where you do that you come in here and you check the boxes that that are going to be things that you might select if if you uh if you don't do heat races in your form of motorsports uncheck that box heat race will not show up in that that session type when you download the download your data and once you do these as well some of these you can come in here and you can actually click to customize so if pre-final isn't doesn't exactly describe how you do it highlight it check it and then come over here and you can click on and customize that to be, being a name that actually fits for your front form of motorsports okay perfect and then the last tab in this one and check all that you all of the ones that you like and those will be the ones that will appear in the download window and then the last one is is um is the advanced tab this one here is this is one of those that you typically are going to set one time and then you're just going to let this kind of go and and uh, um, uh, it's going to work that way for for the rest of the time that you download from that data logger to this computer right so first the first one is what we call the the download window behavior you have some options here almost everybody checks both of these that it, that's the probably the best process one auto select downloadable files what that's basically doing is if you if that hardware that piece of hardware that you're connecting to your laptop if it uh, if it hasn't seen that you've downloaded those before, it's gonna automatically put a checkbox by that. I've got an example back here behind. So I can't check it. You've got, I've got one sample, uh, one test here on this. It, it will automatically check a test if it has not been downloaded to that laptop before. Auto select downloadable files. The other one, which is another reason this one's not checked, is the skip selection of only one lap sessions. What we're trying to do here is give you the option is if you downloaded your, took your car out of your trailer and you started it up and you, and you shut it down and then you drove over to the gas pumps and you came back you haven't been on the track yet you haven't made a complete lap and when you make a complete lap from you, when you leave pit lane and you and then you cross the start finish line you go all the way around and you come back and you cross the start finish line again this number will no longer be a one it's going to be a two and a three and as, as we count laps up right so these one lap sessions are almost always, you know, some sort of a warm up, drive around the paddock area, over to tech, whatever it happens to be. And we give you the option of skipping the selection of those one lap uh, sessions automatically, right? So it, uh, uh, you can still go in and check them later if you, if, you know, geez, I would how much when we pulled it out of the trailer what was the oil pressure you know did the water temperature come up good or you know all those kind of things you want to look at that data just go ahead and come in and check them and go but typically folks want to skip that one uh, those one lap only sessions and if you do put a checkbox there and the you're not uh, deleting them they're still there available for you we're just not automatically you know selecting them for you and then uh, the next box is this this three choices here of what do we do if you went out and we're, we're gathering data and you you went out on a session and then you you came in you made a quick change in the paddock area and you went back out and, and you met, made another run so you're going to have multiple sessions here you haven't downloaded yet <clears throat> pardon me and the this box allows you to do okay i've got these two tests in here these two sessions we're going to work with these two files what do i do with them do i uh do typically do not merge files is what most folks will use if you want to you can merge files logged on the same day so you could at the end of the day if uh if, if you hadn't had a chance to download the entire time you could merge all those into one session and download them and have one data download for data analysis that becomes a little bit more of a problem certainly for searching um the uh the ability to have them in, you know, qualifying in a practice, a qualifying in a, in a race is kind of nice to have three different files for sharing and for looking and, and finding them. But if you want to merge into the same day, choose that selection. And another, the last option here is merge all files. Let's say 
um, and this happens with me sometimes and, 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 and all of our support staff, you go to the track, you're working with somebody and, you, and uh, maybe they haven't downloaded their data logger, you know, or they downloaded it and, and, and those files are still sitting on the data logger. Maybe you just want to get them all off and kind of clean everything up, do a firmware update, whatever it happens to be. You can bring all of those off and, and merge all of the data that's on a logger into one big file if you want to. Uh, in my experience, not not uh, uh, fairly rarely used. So um, my suggestion is do not merge files. And so if you have a practice and a, and a qualifying and a race, they uh, they all come together that way. So, okay, so do not merge files are typically what I'm gonna pick. And then the last piece down here is called uh, additional export formats. This is a little different than what we've done in the past with, with Ray Studio 2 is, is now, if you want to, as you're downloading your data, during the download process, if you want any of these different additional exports, these different file formats, these are created as you do your download. So let's say you want a Google Earth KML file. All you gotta do is come in and check that box. And then every time you download your data, right in that folder where your XRK files are and, and all your information, there will just be another KML file of that entire run in, in, your, in your stack, in, in your data folder. Okay, and there, you know, we've got different different ones here. We'll make a uh, you know another discussion at some point and, and go over all the details of these. But but um, these basically all of these file formats are uh, you have the ability to create these during the download. Where in the past you still have the uh, these abilities in Ray Studio Two Analysis, you just have to go to Data Export and you have choices of of uh, a bunch of <clears throat> pardon me a bunch of different file formats that you can export post you know, looking at the data. This just happens to do it during the download. Okay, perfect. Let me, uh, let me uh, glance over here. That's, the, that, that's the, the generalities of what I wanted to talk about. And then of course, when you wanted to actually download the data, you would come in here and, uh, and, and download the data, right? Here's that box we talked about. Uh, the, the venue types, remember I'd thin that down. I don't wanna go through all of this, but here's that, that uh, Here's the five that I had selected. If I'd had all of those checked, you would have a whole bunch of uh, different ones here. That, so that venue type is, is pretty handy of getting these down to just your type. Okay, that becomes powerful for a lot of folks that are doing this. Okay, let me cancel out of that. I'm gonna, um, one more thing I'd like to do now while we, and while I kind of look over the, the questions and answers, the questions that are coming, I'm gonna start another poll. And what I'd like to do is, is, um, Here's a, here's another poll for you. Uh, again, giving us feedback so we know kind of where these, uh, where these topics uh, should go. What is your AIM user experience level? How, how long have you been using AIM hardware and software? And uh, that's gonna help us, help us understand uh, you know, where we're heading. While you're doing that, I'm gonna look up here. We're already up to about 60% of you have uh, answered those questions. Thank you very much. Keep doing that. We're about half an hour into our into our webinar. We'll open up to the rest of these questions and answers here in just a little bit. Um, some of those are questions that we'll, we'll take care of in a moment. Okay, somebody says, where is the poll? It should have, it should have been a pop-up window right on your screen. Okay. We're a little over a minute into that. I think uh, we got about 65% uh, about of you answered, so thank you very much. That will help us a lot as we, uh, as we continue, uh, continue on. Okay, let's end that polling. Pull it over here. Perfect. Okay. With that, let's, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and jump back to uh, our, our presentation materials real quickly. Let's jump up one. Let's look at these questions and answers that we have over here. And uh, let's, let's ask, answer a couple of these. It looks like we've got um, seven of them that are open. And uh, any of the ones in particular, Cameron or, or uh, Robbie that you see there that you might want to, uh, that you think we can handle here real quickly? Are you talking about the questions and answers? Yeah, on the, yeah, the questions okay. that are still open. Um, so, Anyone in particular? Well, um, 
Let's see here. So it looks like James is asking about seeing the answers to the polls. Is that something that we're going to do? I didn't see that question. Uh, the, uh, we chatted about that a little bit. I think for this one here, let's let's. Uh, they are anonymous, so it wouldn't have been a big deal. But uh, uh, I, I'm not sure I can share the results now that I've done it. I think I have to do it right away. So um, we'll chat about that in the, in the future, and I'll send out a maybe in our uh, respond note. Maybe I'll, I'll I'll give an idea of what they were. I'll follow okay. up with that. Um, I didn't know. Maybe you wanted to expand a little bit on uh, closer to the top of the Q and A. Um, Mark had a question about referencing the cloud and backup. We have some options there, right? And um, uh, uh, one of them is, is you can just, that, that folder where we were storing it, you can put that with Dropbox or OneDrive or, or, or whatever your cloud backup is. And whenever that computer, where you get home from the track, maybe your track has Wi-Fi, but if you get back, that computer, once it gets onto Wi-Fi, that folder will be automatically updated out to the cloud. Then any other computer you have, you know, a second computer or a home computer, that folder will then be updated at that point. That, the, uh, with Ray Studio 2, as we currently run it. The, um, the, the only downside of that is now the data is in that data folder, but the, the data then needs to be imported onto the new computer. There is a process that I have that if anybody is interested, I've, uh, I worked with a, a couple fellows from Microsoft and they gave me a little bit of a better uh, way of sharing that data and, and across computers. And if anybody is interested in that, uh, that more enhanced version of cloud uh, storage, write me an email to Roger at Dame Sports, the, the contact information, you either have it there already or you'll, uh, you'll see it here on the last slide. Write me an email, I'll, uh, I'll send you a document that talks about a, a possible way of even doing uh, uh, multiple computers, not just the second one, but multiple computers, any that are hooked up to this, to your cloud network. Your AIM um, you know, data files and, and, and uh, all of that will not, you'll not have to import them again. Uh, it'll already be uh, set up on your, next, uh, on your next computer you visit. So. Drop me an email and I'll send that out to you guys and you can try it out. Okay, got another one there, Cameron or Robbie? Um, yeah, is the, uh, Ray Phillips is wondering if the date and time can be adjusted, the format type. When we're, when we're creating a file, can you do year, year, month, month, day, day, or? I, I, I don't have a good answer to that. I do not think so that I've ever found. Have you guys, uh, have you guys found anything? Robbie or, or Cameron on that? Uh, no, it's Either for us, it's, it's fixed. That's what I thought. Okay. Okay. See another one that's kind of in that area? Um, there are some that are, aren't quite on topic, but I think might be um, um, priority of metrics to capture and review. Like what, what are your quick top five? Ooh, I think that'd be a good topic for another video. Yeah, that, that is definitely going to be a video. Yeah, that's definitely going to be a, that, that is already on my list over here on my whiteboard, by the way, is, uh, okay, we've got, uh, we, we downloaded our data, kind of an update too. We've downloaded our data, now what? But uh, the, the format that people are really looking for nowadays is, is, is give me that top three, that top five, whatever it happens to be. And I will definitely do that. But what we'll do is we've got a couple of, of, of co-hosts I have in mind that that's their, that, that's their, their main way of, uh, of supporting people that are, that are using the products as well. And I would love to have those folks come in and, and, and give us their, their feed on that as well. So we'll do that one in a future one. Oh, what, is, uh, what is your preference, uh, USB or Wi-Fi? I have, uh, this, now I'll answer this and then our, uh, our other two support guys can talk about it. I have found, uh, we have sped up the USB, it has gotten to the point where it's not, uh, it's the same if not slower on, on normal size files. Uh, I'll, I'll use uh, Wi-Fi almost all the time, right? Sometimes if I'm going to do a firmware update or some other things, maybe I'll, maybe I'll, or a large, large data download, I'll, I'll connect up. Or if I'm working on other people's stuff that have Wi-Fi passwords, I, I connect up with the cable. But I, I have uh, very few problems with the Wi-Fi side. Is that what you're running into as well? Um, I, it's, it's just a speed question for me. If I'm downloading a small data file, um, then Wi-Fi is, is fine. But uh, the last couple of years, I've, I've done a lot of off-road racing. And it's, <laughs> it's, sometimes it's 6, 8, 10, 12 hours of data. Um, and when you're downloading up, as it gets larger, you notice the, the, the download speed. Um, so okay. downloading over Wi-Fi can take minutes where uh, USB can take seconds. Yeah, 
Okay. Okay. So it looks like um, Eric had a good question uh, closer to the bottom. Can you go over the file types and which are the best to save in the archives? The file extensions are hard to remember. I think that is a great question and I get that question a lot and I've actually got a, a document that I've put together and we talk about the different ones and what they are. Uh, that is on my list and probably the third or fourth webinar will be that a topic just about that. So let's, uh, let's cover that one in a little bit. Okay, that's good. Oops. Okay. And the rest of them are, rest of them are kind of set up that same way. So um, one more thing while we're looking those over just a little bit, I'm going to let me, let me go through a couple more slides while you guys study those and then maybe we'll come back to a couple of those in a, in a moment. The, to kind of close out the, the presentation part of this, I, I'd love to give you guys, uh, everybody that's here watching, just a, a little bit more uh, information on training and support. You know, you're here because of, you know, this, this, this situation we find ourselves in, you know, we're all, uh, we're all sticking kind of close to the, to our homes and our offices. And, and uh, there is, and, and a, there is some training and support that's out there for you. AIM is a customer support company that happens to sell you know, these racing electronics. We're, we're, uh, we're out here for you. There's a, uh, you know, we've got the 800 number, the web, the web based stuff that we have. Um, when we do get back out on the track and, and, and we're out there running around, look for our guys. You know, uh, we've got the big uh, sprinter vans out there supporting you. We'll be at a track near you just like we always have. Meanwhile, um, these webinars, the, uh, the, the, the next thing being the, the YouTube page, the, uh, we've got a, a, you know, over 60 videos out there now on lots of different things like this. If, if you haven't visited there, there will be a link. Um, maybe Robbie can post that into the, into the chat. There's a, a that YouTube page is uh, is well used, uh, lots of information. Basically, I we build them based on what we you know the questions we're getting. If we get a bunch of questions on something, we we generate a, a video about it. All of these webinars, including this one, will be on that page. Hopefully, within the next uh, couple of hours, uh, we're we're going to re we're recording all of these, and then we take them and take them straight into into um, uh, the video format and send it up to 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 YouTube. So um, if, you, if you if you want to review some of the stuff we've talked about here or can't make one of these, you know, there you go. You can click on that link and, and, and jump right over to that, uh, that YouTube site. Okay. Here's that contact information I mentioned a little bit ago. If uh, um, talking about the, the cloud the cloud saving and cloud computing, uh, there's my email address we can uh, we can handle uh, questions in, in that way we can if you send them to me. I have one more poll I'd like to go ahead and start. And, um, and let's see, launch polling. Here's another one. This one is uh, uh, select all that apply. This one's, again, like the rest of them, we're going to, yeah, it's going. Can you guys see that? Oh, there, somebody answered one. Okay. If, um, there, there it goes. The, these are just some topics. Um, it only gives me 10 of them. So let's go kind of pick the one that's one or two. You can select multiples, obviously. What we're really looking for is, again, future direction from you is, is how, do we, how do we set this up to what topics are we going to do in the future? Uh, just so you know, the, um, uh, this coming Thursday, we've got another one of these in, in two days. The topic for that one is going to be in the data analysis side, which is um, what I'm looking at as the results as they come in. That's probably 50% 50, 50 of what, uh, what you guys are asking for is data analysis. And the, uh, the one on Thursday is going to be the user interface. One of the questions I get a lot when I, when I either do my on-site seminars or at track site support, people want to see, this is just an example, but how to show the, the GPS track map alongside of the, the data analysis, you know, the, the, uh, the squiggly lines, right, the measures graphs, and, um, and how to set that up, right, and, uh, and how to make your user interface work for you, uh, and, then, and then how to save it. So what we're going to talk about on Thursday is, is just setting up the screen the way that you like it, something that works for you, and then how to save that. And so we'll ba get into the basics of, of user profiles and saving that view. So when it, the next text you open, you can open it up in these two or three views that you liked very quickly. So we're going to build two or three things uh, live uh, during the, on Thursday's webinar, and then show you how to, to create those into, uh, 
you know, save those as profiles and then back up and save the, the, the profile so you can, uh, you know, share them with your friends, put them on your second computer, you know, those kind of things. So, um, so the topics you guys are pointing at here are, are exactly uh, where we're going to head, at least the, the, the short term. I had to make some plans on, on the first few seminars before we got to uh, all of your feedback. So I do appreciate, uh, appreciate all of that information. Okay. Perfect. The, um, so we're going to probably end that polling and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll take one more quick look at, uh, you know, talk to Cameron and Robbie and see if there's any other questions and answers that we might want to answer real quickly here. And then we'll call it a day and, uh, and, and move on. So I'm going to end that polling, get that out of the way of everybody. And uh, Robbie and Cameron, is there anything you've seen there on, the, uh, on any of the questions and answers that you think we ought to handle today or should we uh, put them all into, into uh, the future? No, there is a there's a couple that a um, have been asked a, a couple of times. So, will Tuesday and Thursday presentations be the same topics each week? No, no, no. Uh, the, every one of these is going to be different. So, this one coming on Thursday will be that data analysis and setting up your screen. Robbie, maybe will pop in the in, into the chat the the link to register for Thursday's uh, uh, Thursday's webinar. The Thursday's webinar, if you, if, you, if, you, if you click on that link that we provided earlier or it's in the email that you got for an hour ago, it's down at the bottom of that email, that allows you to, to, to uh, register for all of the reoccurring ones all the way through the end of, uh, end of uh, May. So uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, you're gonna, be, you're gonna be registered for all of them. If you click on that link that's in the chat or in the email that you get, every single webinar is gonna have a different topic and, uh, and be fairly short and concise like this. We're, we're trying to make them where, where we talk about the, that single subject and then we, when we put it out on YouTube, we can make that searchable and, and people can find, how do I you know, connect my, uh, you know, do my data downloading in Ray Studio 3? So we wanna keep it kind of focused on that, but we're gonna have tons of these to do. So uh, all of your topics, we're gonna individually do those. So every, diff every Tuesday, Thursday will be a different topic. Okay, you had another one, Robbie? Um, oh, uh, just just more of a, uh, a reach out. The the questions that we like to answer on uh, on the webinar would be specific to the the topics themselves. So hardware and uh, related questions. I'm sure we'll have a webinar just more question and answer type format where you can talk to Cameron and myself uh, about hardware issues and things like that. Um, some of them are, are just really detailed and they require a lot of typing. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> always reach out to us from like we we're, we're all available through. Um, through phone calls, emails, and things like that uh, for, for the more technical side questions. And the number there is at the bottom of your of the screen we're looking at there, the 800 number. Uh, always call that. That's our tech support line. The uh, I, I, I am, uh, Cameron, maybe you'll have one in a minute, but uh, while you're looking, I am tickled. I, I, we have 13 open questions right now, that, that, but 55 answered ones. So these, these guys have been sitting over here and they've been uh, uh, answering questions like crazy. I, I really appreciate the interaction from everybody that's watching. Okay, Cameron, you have anything else that you would like to add? Uh, I'm scrolling through the questions, see if there's any that we missed that were on topic. Um, and if there were any questions that we did miss, um, anything that you'd like, you know, further uh, explanation on, you can always uh, contact me at Cameron at aimsports.com. It's just C-A-M-E-R-O-N. Um, and be happy to chat with anybody else any further. Perfect. Same thing that we might have missed. So. I think I think we're all uh, first name uh, at aimsports.com. So Robbie uh, at aimsports.com. If you guys need anything. Perfect. And um, uh, I, I see I, I've, I've watched the chat a little bit as I've gone. I probably stumbled because I read a little bit. But <laughs> one of them there was uh, I appreciate you guys what you're doing. This is be, this has been very beneficial. This is um, I appreciate that, and uh, it is what this is all about, especially in these times when. Uh, you're not uh, able to go out to the racetrack and we can't see you there. And uh, the, you know, these are the kind of things that we're, uh, that we're gonna do as much as we can to, to do what we can do. So I appreciate everybody that's, um, the, the, that showed up. It, it has been a, it's been a good time for all of us. If you haven't signed up yet for the, for the future one starting this coming Thursday, go ahead and do that. You'll get an email in the next day or so. Give us any feedback about what you've seen. Uh, in this one, things we can change, things we can do a little bit better. Look forward to it. I appreciate it. Everybody stay safe. Um, and, uh, and we will see you on, see you on Thursday. See you guys. Bye everybody.